Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Wing Gaming. As some of you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon today, I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of Kingsguard, Leandros' Path. Anyway, y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel and get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Alright. As he wrestled on the ground, you couldn't help thinking that there was a chance you might lose him forever. Leandros brought back his arm and his claws jutted out. He struck back down and tore into the assailant's armor as if it were paper. Even with as strong as he was, being able to rip apart metal so easily with just his bare hands should not have been possible. As the grip around Leandros' neck loosened and the assailant's arms fell to his side, you knew that the fight would be over soon. You should have been cheering for him, at the very least relieved, but you started to shake in unease. Metal flew across the courtyard as Leandros continued his assault, his roars becoming more bestial and his fur staining black and red. You quickly realized that the blood was likely his own. It appeared that his reckless attack was not without injury as deep cuts plagued his hands and arms, but he still continued to dig in. His attention was undivided. He likely was ignoring the pain, or perhaps he couldn't feel his wounds pouring out blood as he focused intensely on his target. Seeing it wasn't just his claws that he used as his weapon, he bared his fangs and with the man's body now open and exposed, he dug in, growling like a dog. Like the wolf assassin you faced, this one also didn't cry out in pain. He merely groaned as Leandros had his way with him. But as much as the black blood spilt, the man should have been dead by now. Leandros could have stopped at any time. For a solid minute, you watched, unsure of what to do, how to approach Leandros. You wanted to yell out his name, call for him to stop, but for the first time, you were afraid to call out to him. Afraid of him. The expression on his face, it no longer had the clean and discerning look of rage and fury. Rather, it was a frightening amalgam of dark emotions, ones you couldn't even name. Every so often, you caught a slight, a slight upturn of his lips as he reeled back his head, ripping apart flesh and bone. It missed. Is that what's causing this? You felt it back in the throne room. You almost turned your blade against your own father. Was he being affected by the madness? Were you subjected to it as well? You felt normal. No longer had the urge to hunt or kill. Perhaps it truly wasn't that. His face was dark as night, as though someone had dumped a pail of black paint over his head. All that you could recognize was his golden eyes. Then he finally stopped, part way into going for another bite. You dared not to get closer. It was already sickening enough to see pieces of the man's body flung across the garden hanging from nearby flowers. This was supposed to be a place of peace and tranquility. Yet here blood was now watering the plants. Uh, Leon? He reacted to your presence, slowly rising from his spot. Are, are, are you alright? He didn't turn around. Rather, he brought his hands up close to his face and ran towards the fountain. He looked to be in a daze as he stared into the water. L Leon? He glanced up at you. He glanced up as you approached. Stay back, Jake! His voice was dark and hoarse, his tone soft but stern. Why? You... you shouldn't see me like this. I don't know what came over me. He dipped his hands into the fountain and frantically splashed water over his face, arms, and chest, only stopping to look at himself in the water, then continuing at an even more dis distressed pace. At the other end of the fountain where you stood, the clear water turned murky as swirls of red and black made their way towards you. He looked up at Leandros. His face from behind the fountain looked clean once more, but he still had the unnerving expression on his face. He was staring at his hands once more, slightly shaking. Uh, are you alright? Yes. You, you're not hurt, are you? No, I'm alright. The dark mist seemed to have evaporated. It no longer swarmed around Leandros, and even the assassin seemed to be free of it. Whatever it was, Leandros no longer had the look of a madman in his eyes. Leandros walked around the fountain, stopping part of the way when he saw your concerned expression. He knew exactly what you were thinking, what you had seen. I... I'm sorry you went to see that, and had to witness any of this. You could tell he wanted to leave, to run away from you. What he had done was something completely unexpected of him. He was usually so level-headed, but it was as though he snapped. Despite your fear, you, despite your fear, you knew he needed to be comforted. Same with yourself. I don't know what happened, but I'm just glad that you made it in time. I would have been dead. No, I should have tried harder to reach you. Is that you know? Water time. I was late. You had to go through that ordeal because of me. All of this is because of me. I was confident that you would have been safe. Never once did I doubt that you would be in danger. And now, you saw that. I know what you think of me now. Just now I think of myself as just know that I think of myself the same way. All I saw was you doing your job. He walked forward and he stared at you in surprise. You think one little incident is going to make me change how I feel about you? I'm a monster, Jake. 
The same as those assassins. Any sane person would have ran from me by now. Run from the person who saved me? Risked their life for me? Would a monster do that? Yeah, I was fucking terrified when I saw you go after that man, but how did you expect me to react? And if I ran away from you after knowing what you did for me, wouldn't that be just as bad as being called a monster? Right now, I need you, and, no, and, know that, and I know that right now you need me too. You pushed yourself forward and wrapped your arms around Leandros. Your head pressed against his chest and became buried in his damp fur. It was still soft to the touch. All fears drained down through your feet as his heat warmed you from the chill in the air. His gentle beating heart was pleasing to your ears. He wrapped his arms around you, holding you tight. You're not a monster. And even if you were, I could never run from you. I must be truly I must truly be blessed by the gods for you to still be safe and sound. The gods had nothing to do with this. He squeezed you tighter and tighter. You felt water drip down onto the back of your neck as he heavily as he heaved heavily. While you wished he would have held you longer, you couldn't get any air and your gut still hurt. You coughed heavily, spitting out blood. He let go immediately and you wiped the side of your lip. What's wrong? You're hurt, aren't you? Where? I just was kicked really hard though. I'll be all right. You stifled another cough and found it difficult to stand. Leandros was quick to act as your crutch, his strong arms doing most of the lifting. Whatever had caused Leandros to go berserk before had seemed to pass. He was back to his usual self, though far more nurturing than he were used to. You need to rest before we move on. I think we might be safe for the moment. We still need to get you to the dock, so it's a bit of a walk. I don't want to leave without father. Jake, there's no time. After reading, after, after reading your face, he stopped. Koshiro is with him, so he will be all right. I'm sure he will convince your father to come as well. All right, let's go then. If at any point you can't walk, let me know immediately. I can always carry carry you if I have to. Before the two of you move, another familiar face emerged from the shadows of the garden. Kashiro! He had a serious look on his face as he approached Leandris and whispered into his ear. You did your best to read their muzzles, but both became aware, both became aware and began to change up how they spoke to hide as much information from you. Late. Too many. Time, it's... Sorry. Sorry. There. Time to waste. Damn. Again. Should we... No, just... Make sure. Care. Kashira nodded as soon as they were done whispering among, amongst each other. He's gone, isn't he? The two of them turned toward you in surprise. Huh? What are you... That's what the two of you were talking about now, wasn't it? I felt it a while back, just before you leapt at that assassin. I, I felt something leave me. It would explain why you're here. Jake, I... Please don't lie to me! Just tell me the truth! It's my fault. I couldn't make it in time. How did it happen? He was... Jake, Kushiro, now isn't the time for that. We need to keep moving. You can't expect me to leave now. I have to see him again. That would be suicide. The entire castle is swarmed right now. Then keep me safe until I reach him. I've been fighting non-stop to get to you. I couldn't take on so many enemies at once. Then I'll go by myself. I can sneak around much better than you can. Jake, I understand your feelings. Then let me go. But I have a duty to see you to safety now more than ever. If I have to knock you out and haul you back to the ship, then I will. Second now, water time. You wouldn't. Please don't make me do that. Your commands would be useless right now. He was holding back tears. He was just as disturbed by this as you were. Tell me everything at the ship. He stared at Kashiro, but he couldn't keep his eyes on you. He turned his head to the ground as if disappointed and nodded. Oh. Your eyes widened when you saw the wolf slowly starting to squirm again. Leandris pushed himself in front of you and readied his claws once more. Kashiro, on the other hand, made his way over to the assassin. Kashiro! This man is dangerous! The fox's eyes glowed, and before the wolf could get up, he had a dagger buried in his throat. The wolf squirmed even more before taking his final breath. With a flick of his wrist, Kashiro cleaned his blade, flinging the eye core off. You turned your head away as your stomach started to act up again. I know it's tough to see. Leandros had caught you flinching. You thought you saw it all day. I thought you saw it all before today. Death was natural. It shouldn't have surprised you. But your gut disagreed with your logic. Was it a sign of weakness? What is... What is... I was already too late to try to hide it behind a weak response. Death. It's harsh to say, but you will have to get used to it. Maybe even now more than ever. 
I thought I could protect you from it. I was naive to think that. But know that you don't have to face it alone. If you still aren't frightened of me, I will be there for you. Always. You noticed that your fingers had curled into a tight fist. Your body language was a dead giveaway to how you were feeling. Leandris turned around in place, his ears twitching. Kashiro, change your plans. We can't wait any longer. Leandris gripped your hand tightly. Are you ready? You nodded, too tired to say anything more. Leandris guided you out of the castle and you followed without restraint. You wanted to tell yourself that this was just another nightmare. Running through the streets and witnessing that the castle wasn't the only place being attacked was a horrifying awakening. You grew up in a world that was at peace for so long that you had nurtured a false sense of security. Your city was supposed to be one of the safest places in the world, and yet here you were, under siege. You didn't have time to stop and help the various people suffering. It seemed that the assassins weren't just after your blood. Every so often you caught slight wisps of that purple mist emanating from all around you. You questioned why no one else was noticing it or even mentioning it. Perhaps they were all just too focused on the chaos to care. Or maybe this was just the start of you going mad. After all, who could say who could say say after seeing this? The sails and masts of ships poked up high above the buildings as you turned down an alley and the ocean came into sight. The smell of seaweed and fish became even stronger and your shoes stomped down on aged worn aged worn wood. It was abnormally quiet. Usually the docks would have been so packed that every few minutes someone would have been bumped into the water. But right now no one stirred. There wasn't anyone else around. Only a hulking figure stood leaning against a pole. He turned your way and approached. Took you damn well long enough. Leandros gripped your hand even tighter. Leandros? Stay close. What's that look for? I wasn't expecting you to be here, Ramos. Really now? You were the one to tell me to meet here. I told you to be here only if you had Jake with you. So, what's it matter? He's here right now. That's exactly the problem. Why would you be here and not out looking for him? Huh? You've already found him. Why would I need to do that? I suppose I wasn't expecting you to know that he was with me. What the hell are you saying? Are you trying to confuse me or something? I didn't know he was with you in the first place. Oh, wait, I see now. You think I'm one of those bad guys now, don't you? It's a bit hard to trust people right now. Many of my own soldiers don't appear to be who I thought they were. I have every right to be skeptical. So, you know, water time. Well, you're reading too far into this. You asked me to meet here in case of an emergency. Your castle, probably the whole city, is long gone now with all those killers swarming about. I signed up to protect your prince, and I lay down my life for your kingdom. And since I don't exactly know the layout of your castle, I thought it would be best to at least wait here by the docks for you. At the very least, you or the prince would have swung by. So you've forsaken all those people in the castle. Hold your damn horses, Leo. I did what I could to see them out of the castle and clear away. Took care of plenty of those assassins and saved quite a few nobles, though they ended up screaming and running away from me. Probably thought I was the enemy. Completely ungrateful. Besides, I should be saying the same about you. These are your guests, after all. The king made it very clear what our priorities were in the waiting room. Well, then I apologize for not making a better call of judgment. Not like your plans have been entirely successful so far. The Andrew gripped your hand harder. You had to wrench it free or risk him breaking a few of your fingers. Regardless of how things have turned out, you were given a task and went against it. So then what do you want me to do? Stay here and fight those damn monsters? Or would you rather I tie my hands around my back so you can keep an eye on me? I'm sure you could easily break free from that. Perhaps, but by the looks in your eyes, it's going to be hard to convince you, and I'm not much of a sweet talker to men. One way or another, I'm getting aboard that ship, though. I want the fastest route out of here while I have the chance. I know a doomed city when I see one, and I don't want to be here during the aftermath. This city is far from fallen. Not so long as our soldiers stand and fight, and the prince still breathes. Sure, sure. Whatever you say. Huh? Oh, for fuck's sake! Ramos closed his fist tight and walked towards you. Stay back, Ramos! Don't be so dense. I know I, I know you can hear it, too. They're here. From the alleyways poured out three, five, ten assassins. More than half of them looked injured with black blood dripping off their wounds. The dark mist was thick around the group of them. Damn, we've wasted too much time here. They will not get to Jake. Even though they were outnumbered, they still rushed headfirst into the group of assassins. Steel clashed behind you. The three of them fought surprisingly well together. Kashiro buried his knife deep into the leg of a man leaping towards Ramos, while the rhino slammed aside one coming for Leandros. It was as if their previous feud had vanished. They knew who the real enemy was, and they set aside the all differences to defeat them. Jake, get to the ship! Leandros was granted a slight respite. A few, seconds to, a few seconds to glance your way before he was brought back into the fray. An assassin broke free from the fight and made his way towards you. No, you don't! 
Leandris pounced and tackled the man to the ground. He stared back at me with eyes full of fire. You didn't need to be told twice, and staying here gawking wasn't doing them any favors. Alright, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and uh, check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Anyway, I love you all. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!